Hey guys, how's it going? Kermode here. In this part of our beginner Ableton course series, I'm going to show you guys how MIDI clips work, how to program your own drums, how to program your own melodies, as well as show you the basics of creating your own drum racks, as well as the basic types of instruments inside of Ableton. If you haven't already grabbed my free Ableton starter sample pack, make sure to grab it in the description of the video, but I don't want to waste your time. We've got a lot to cover. So without further ado, let's get going. So how I'm actually going to start this video off is showing you guys how to program your own drum rack, how to create essentially a virtual drum kit with your own drums so that we can program drum beats with it. So what you want to do first is head on over to the drums or the instrument section where you can grab a tool known as drum rack. You want to click and create a new track for that. And with that in there, you can look at the bottom and see your drum rack. If you're not seeing this, you might be looking at the clips view. Click this button here and you're looking at your drum rack, your instrument. So how this works is you have 128 empty cells that correlate to the 128 MIDI notes you can play in Ableton, the 128 notes on a keyboard uh, you can play in Ableton. And what you can do is you can drop in drums to then correlate to those different notes. As you can see here, we've got C, D, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my library here and I'm going to grab the types of drums I want. I'm going to grab a kick drum and I'm going to put it in C. And then you can see that a little play button is here so I can listen to that kick drum. I'm going to grab a snare. I'm going to grab that there. I'm going to grab some sort of hi-hat. Uh, so I'll go over to my cymbals here. And I'll grab any one. So we now have populated this with a kick, snare, and a hat. At any point, you can solo any one of these or mute them so you don't hear them, which works well when the beat's actually going. So now what we want to do is we want to create what's known as a MIDI clip. And this is what we were using in previous videos to trigger the instruments. And so there's two or three main ways you can do this. Uh, the first is just simply double clicking on an empty cell in session view. Otherwise, you can right click and insert a MIDI clip. Or in arrangement view, highlight an amount of time, right click and insert MIDI clip and it will be that long. By default, when it's an arrangement view, it's one bar in length. So one bar being four quarter notes in length. And you can simply extend that by moving this uh, loop bracket and arrow here. So see how I've clicked that, you can extend that to be the length you want. So I'm gonna make that two bars. Or alternatively, you can change the end and the uh, length here which are broken up into bars, beats, and sixteenths. So you'll notice as I move this, that changes. Now you want to make sure that loop is on too, so that as I program a drum beat, this loops. So now let's take a look at that. I'm going to insert a kick drum here, and you want to have this little uh, blue headphone button on so you can hear what the notes actually sound like. I'm going to do a hat there, snare there. Let's see what that sounds like. Perfect, so let's quickly highlight those and duplicate that. Cool. Cool. So now what I can do if I want to add more variation is I can hit duplicate loop. It'll actually double that length of time and now we can create some more patterns here. See what we can come up with. Cool. Now if you want to speed up your session. We haven't actually looked at this board before. I'm going to speed this up to 140 BPM. This is beats per minute and this is where you set the tempo of your song. Cool. 
there we go. All I was doing was double clicking to insert a MIDI note. You can extend them by putting your mouse over the edge and stretching it, which will come more into play for say melodic MIDI. So let's actually quickly bring in an instrument so I can show you melodic MIDI and then we'll and then we'll come back to the drum rack and compare. So I'm just going to drag a random instrument here, analog. And if I actually want to play it and test it out, you have to click this little arm button here and you have to make sure your keyboard as a uh, and this key button is here as well, which will turn your keyboard into a piano. The same goes for the drum rack. Now you'll notice that as I play notes, I'm not playing in the right octave range. I'm playing too low. So you can press Z and X to go up in octaves and move up in a range you can play. Now I'll go back over to my instrument here. And you can hear that I'm triggering that and I can play that. So I'm going to double click and insert some sort of MIDI clip. I'll actually let the drums play while we program something. So let's introduce maybe a C. We'll just do something in C major, make it really easy. Notice how, in this case, having a longer MIDI note makes a difference. You can also have more than one MIDI note play at a time to start creating harmonies. So we can introduce more and more notes if we so choose. And if you need more space, you can open it like this. Now at this point, if I click and drag, I can zoom in, but only so far. And that's because this fold button was accidentally on. And what this does is it will actually fold what you're seeing here to what MIDI notes are actually on the page. And with drum racks, it actually folds it to what drums you have. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to unfold because I don't want that. And then I'm going to click and drag to a range where I can see a lot more notes. You can also zoom in and out here like you would on the timeline. So let's just take that out. There, we've introduced some notes. So there we go, they're playing at the same time. So it's as simple as clicking and stretching to your desired amount. You also have common key commands like cut, paste, duplicate that you can use to work, manipulate these as well. You can use the arrow keys to move them around as well as shift in the arrow keys to extend or shorten them based off the grid size. Now grid size is something we haven't looked at yet. Notice how as I extend this, it snaps to the grid you can see here. Well, say you wanted to make smaller notes. And we'll go back over to our drum rack for this and I'll actually uh, solo our drum rack. If you wanna create smaller patterns, tighter patterns, like say you wanted little hat rolls. Well, what you can do is you can press Command 1 and 2 to contract and expand this grid Command 3 to turn it into a triplet grid, and Command 4 will actually turn off your grid altogether, and then your notes are free form, they can go anywhere you want. So I'm going to turn my grid back on, and we're going to do something quite tight. So we can do little hat rolls here. Maybe too tight. And actually, let's do a little triplet for that one. Let's actually undo that. Let's set this to a triplet grid. And let's make it a bit of a wider triplet grid. So command three, there we go. Let's do something like this. Now notice how at this point our drums are feeling very 
stagnant, very similar in volume. They don't have much feel to them. Well, there's two ways we're going to approach that. The first is what's known as velocity. And if you see these little red lines at the bottom, what velocity is, is depending on the instrument, but more often than not, will change how much volume and like kind of oomph goes into your sound. So with our little velocities here, I'm going to turn them down. So they've got a bit more feel to it. Notice how they're a different color as well. I'm liking that. And now I'm actually really liking the triplet feel. I'm going to move my drums onto the triplet grid. Or if you want to edit more than one drum at once, you hold shift and click them. Actually, not that one. And we're going to move them onto a triplet grid here. And let's keep that little hat groove going. I really like that as well. Highlight with uh, clicking and dragging and duplicate. Perfect. I'm liking that quite a bit. Maybe I'll move that snare over to make that feel a little better. Now there's one other way we can give our MIDI both drums and uh, notation more human feel and that's this groove and I talked about it earlier in my first video when we looked at the groove pool and I'm not going to go into too much detail about it but what it does is it applies swing or feel to your clip here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this little hot swap button It'll bring me to my groove presets and I'm going to go through the menus and find one. Really like the feel of that. I'm going to hit enter. And what I'm going to do is if I like it, you can't actually see what it's doing right now until you hit this commit button and see how all our notes here kind of slightly moved off. Let's undo that and let's redo that. So they move around and they get some different velocities based off the groove. So it'll actually add a bit of velocity, add a bit of off timing. See how our kick here is like a, a little off. So it's gonna do the, both these things to make it feel more human. You can do this to MIDI as well. And what's really nice is once you use one, it appears in this drop down menu and then I'll commit that as well. So now they're both doing the same thing. Now, this isn't going to sync up anymore because it's no longer in a triplet grid. That's okay. I'm not too worried about it. But I do want to show you a couple other fun ways to edit MIDI. So I'm actually going to completely get rid of the melodic MIDI for a second. Uh, we'll come back to it in a minute. But a few other fun functions. We've looked at this duplicate loop. You can also press this times two to make it uh, twice as long. Or the other way around, you can speed things up by making them twice as fast. At this tempo, it's a bit much. You could also reverse MIDI, which will actually take the last note and move it to the beginning. Doesn't really work with this type of pattern. Maybe if I take out these last few drums here and then I hit reverse, let's try that. pretty weird but sometimes it can be pretty cool like for example what if we just reversed the hi-hats that's not bad you can also invert which instead of reversing their order from start to finish it'll reverse their order in top to bottoms so if we invert that the hi-hat pattern is now where the kicks are the kick pattern is now where the hi-hats are And that was a fun idea to test because this is kind of like metal drums now almost. That's kind of neat. And the final really important function I want you to take a look at is this legato button. 
where any note will be extended to the next note. Now this comes more into play when you've got melodic stuff, because if we click this chord and we legato it, that'll really make a difference. Versus how short it was. So that legato button's gonna come in handy, and these reverse and inversions are really gonna mess things up when you're using melodic stuff. So sometimes it's just fun to test out these ideas and see how they work. So just to kind of review the differences again, what the drum MIDI will do is it'll display the drums on the left and you program these from left to right. You can uh, double click to put them in and you can use basic key commands like duplicate, cut, paste. And you can change the length of the loop and the clip with this start arrow here and make sure loop is on. If loop isn't on, the end arrow will be more important than the loop bracket and it will end when it hits the end of that arrow and it won't keep playing. Where this loop up top will actually loop it constantly. So that has to be shorter than the end arrow for that to work. Actually, it might override it. And so that overrides the end arrow if it's a different length and then the end arrow doesn't matter. Now on melodic MIDI, on the left you have a piano with all your notes. And as you double click them, you'll be able to insert MIDI notes and actually create melodies and harmonies here. So that's the basics of clips. You can double click to insert them and start programming. You can highlight an amount of time. Um, but there's actually one thing we haven't talked about yet, and that's actually recording and playing your own melodies. So there's two different ways. If your track is armed and you're in arrangement view, you simply hit the arrangement view button, a clip will appear, and as you play, the notes will be inserted. Now, because we weren't in back to arrangement, we weren't able to hear that as we did it but you can see it recorded. If we do that again with the back to arrangement button off, you can see those appear there. Now, if you're in this view, however, what you wanna do is with your track armed, you'll notice the stop buttons become little recording buttons. So you can hit record, play some notes, and you'll actually see they appear there. So that's really cool. You can actually record straight into this view. Now, if you have a clip going, like our first one, and you want to record over top of it, say you had some good ideas, what you can do is you can hit this session record button here and what it will do is it will record into this clip. And it will actually record it in. Now there's a big problem here. Everything's really out of time and I don't actually want to edit those MIDI notes. Well, what you can do is highlight them, right click and go to quantize and it will actually try and put it on beat. Now it was a little off, so we want to go to our quantize settings and see what was wrong there. So the amount wasn't 100% from a previous session. So with that at 100%, we can pick what time value, and I'll do a quarter note. And I want to adjust both the start and ends of my notes to a quarter note. There you go, you can see that locked in there. And if we hit the record button again, I'm gonna insert some more notes. I'm gonna hit stop. I'm going to quantize that again. So I'm going to right click, quantize that, and I'm gonna change the note. I wasn't happy with it. So 
So that is just yet yeah, another way to get MIDI clips going. And then again, same thing. Once you've got clips that you like, you can bring them over to your arrangement view and actually start arranging a song. So that's the basics of MIDI. That's the basics of setting up your drum rack. But now what about the instrument types? What sort of instruments do we have to work with? And now I've talked previously in our first video how to bring sounds in from this library, but I actually want to talk about the different types of instruments here. So the first type are what I like to call synthy synths, and these are what you would typically imagine a synthesizer to be. Now this consists of analog here, the one we were using previously. And this is a subtractive synthesizer that emulates, well, analog synthesizers. The next one is operator, and this is an FM synthesizer, a frequency modulation synthesizer. The next is a wavetable, and wavetable is a wavetable synthesizer. Now don't forget as well, you, if you don't know how to use these, and I'll go into further depth in a whole other synthesis course, an instrument course down the road, if you don't know how to use these and you just want to explore their sounds, open up their drop down menus and grab a bass by that type of instrument. The next type of instrument are physically modeling instruments. And what these do is they try to emulate real life type sounds. So the first is collision, and this one tries to emulate mallets. Mallets and bells. They also have some really fun sort of abstract sounds as well. The next is electric. This tries to emulate like electric pianos and organs and bells and things like that. This tries to emulate pianos and keys. And then the last one is tension, and this one tries to emulate strings. So those are pretty fun as well. And then the last type are what I call sampler type instruments. And they're instruments that trigger samples and allow you to play samples, audio samples. The first we looked at was drum rack, where you drag uh, samples into here. The next is impulse, which is actually kind of a simplified drum rack. You don't have nearly as many cells or parameters. Next is sampler, which is a sampler. You drop an audio file in here and you play it. And next is simpler, which isn't actually simpler than sampler. It, it used to be, now it's just different. Um, so those are them. I'm not going to go into too much detail about them, but what I recommend doing is going into their presets because these actually have sometimes fully recorded samples. So if I actually try and find a guitar, this is a fully sampled instrument, and what I mean by that is each note I play is actually an audio recording. And that's why it sounds so real. If I take out these two high notes, right here, Let's drop it an octave down. This is a cool shortcut. Highlight notes and press shift up and down to move them entire octaves. And I'm also going to make them touch with legato. So those are all the basic instrument types. Again, I don't want to go into detail about each instrument on how it actually works because that's for future videos, but I want you guys now to go ahead and be able to practice writing mel melody patterns, writing drum patterns, and bringing in the right type of instrument you want or the right type of drum rack to bring in sounds here. 
So again, don't forget about presets. These are gonna help you a lot in the beginning just by opening a, a drop down menu. Drum presets are here when you hit drums instead of instruments. And you actually can bring in fully organized kits. So you can really quickly just start to write beats. So there we go, guys. Thanks again. My name's Kermody. If you want to start writing beats, make sure to grab my beginner Ableton starter pack. It's got all the essentials you need. You can bring in samples. You can start writing beats right after this video and actually start practicing. So I got, hope you got a lot out of this. If you did, drop a comment, leave a like, maybe share it around. It would help more than you know. So thanks, guys. I'm Kermody. Peace.